Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're ready to start our, a couple sessions now, uh, highlighting the a couple spore chronic disease networks in Canada. I would now like you to, to introduce you leads of Diabetes Action Canada, Dr. Gary Lewis, who is the scientific co-lead, and Ms. Uh, Tracy McGuire, who is the executive director of Diabetes Action Canada. Dr. Lewis is an endocrinologist and professor in the Department of Medicine and Department of Physiology at the University of Toronto. And he's also a senior scientist at the Toronto General Hospital Research Institute, part of the University Health Network. And Ms. McGuire has been with Diabetes Action Canada for now for over five years and brings more than 15 years of research project and program management experience. Diabetes Action Canada is a spore chronic disease network funded through CIHR. And Gary and Tracy will be sharing with us the latest work and impacts of Diabetes Action Canada and how OSU centers such as ICS are supporting the network. So Gary, over to you. Thank you very much, Dean. And uh, also thank you, Vasanthi, for all the tremendous support that uh, you've provided our organization. And um, as mentioned, uh, my colleague, uh, Tracy McGuire, will join me um, for the Q&A uh, session. We should spend about 10 minutes on this presentation, then have about 10 minutes for Q&A. I'll direct many of those to Tracy um, while I relax after the presentation. So this is our group, and um, I am just going to, um, the, the slides are, are quite dense because we only have um, about five slides. And so there's a lot of information on these slides. So just bear with me, I'm gonna walk you through them. So don't, don't try and read the whole thing. Um, so firstly, um, our mission is to co-design, implement, and evaluate scalable, equitable models of health and social care services for all persons with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Let's move over here to this wheel, which really describes our organization. We'll start on the outer part of the wheel. So these are our actual programs, and I'll have a chance to highlight some of them, not all of them, in, in the next few slides. So our programs are designed to prevent blindness from diabetes, uh, prevent diabetes in indig indigenous peoples with a, quite a lot of uh, emphasis on youth, um, to prevent amputations, that, that much feared complication of diabetes and how we're trying to do that, address mental health and diabetes. Uh, it's a very big issue with at least a third of people with uh, chronic disease and particularly diabetes having mental health and uh, uh, diabetes distress. Um, innovations in type 1 diabetes, we'll talk a little bit about. We've been involved in training and mentoring uh, the new generation of diabetes researchers. Um, we have a fantastic program with our McMaster nursing colleagues and older adults with uh, diabetes. So we'll be talking about those are our programs. The way our organization is uh, structured is uh, we then have leadership as well as uh, managers in these three areas as well to support the programs. And so we, a, a very big part of what we do are di digital health solutions, which really underpins many of our programs. Um, we have a very active and formal patient engagement. And I know that you'll have questions about how we engage our partners, uh, our patient partners and caregivers, uh, and very importantly, th uh, through an EDI lens. And then, of course, the knowledge mobilization and implementation science part of what we're doing. So DAC 2.0, which is the, the new iteration of our program, really focus on, focuses on knowledge mobilization and implementation. And of course, the person living with diabetes um, and their families are at the middle of that. So um, we really function as a backbone organization. We're not a funding organization. We don't have the funds for that. So our organization is, is really a catalyst. It makes things happen. And um, how do we do this? We engage patient partners as agents of change. We support coalition of uh, patient partners, researchers, healthcare professionals, policy decision makers to co-design, implement, mobilize, and scale models of equitable integrated health and social care services uh, that we had previously designed in our first five years. We empower healthcare professionals to manage practice change, to effectively use evidence-based diabetes clinical practice guidelines and address social determinants of health. 
and partner strategically with four entities, such as uh, many of the OSIR uh, entities and key stakeholders. So let's just go into some of the programs and, and please bear in mind that I'm not, and, and Tracy, we're not the experts in this. We work with experts uh, in this. So we may or may not be able to answer some of your very uh, specific questions you may have regarding the program. But the goal of this program is to improve accessibility and awareness of retinopathy screening, especially among vulnerable populations. So we have the data in Ontario from ICES that at least a third of all people living with diabetes have not had their eyes examined in the last uh, two and many, many, sometimes many years. Um, we know that diabetic retinopathy requires detection and screening, and there are many very, very effective treatments that can uh, um, prevent visual, vision loss. So it's really getting the individual to be screened to detect the early changes of retinopathy that's so challenging. And so we need to, first of all, use data to identify the person who has not had their eyes screened. How do we engage that patient? We know that the intervention that we're using now, um, a lot of it can be done with cameras and photography and, and now uh, artificial intelligence enabled uh, reading of the images, which can be instantaneous in seven seconds, we can give a reading uh, that indicates whether there's a problem or not. Um, how do we follow the person post-intervention, refer them for treatment, and then ongoing monitoring? So we have this very interesting program that is being done in conjunction with the um, uh, CHCs in, in Ontario. So these Ontario Community Health Centre um, EMR data are now linked to ICES administrative data and analyze to reveal 72,000 persons unscreened in the last 425 uh, days. Um, we then contact the patients directly, invite them for screening and, and uh, evaluate in these three CHCs. Um, we're studying the uh, barriers and facilitators of this. Um, we also, uh, Val Rack and her colleagues have a, a CIHR team grant that has extended this uh, program into other provinces as well. And the project has now been ac accepted as an SSU uh, um, collaborative project to facilitate knowledge mobilization with provincial governments. There are many challenges, not least of which is privacy, data sharing, and health system barriers. So uh, unlike a cancer screening, which is a prescribed entity, we do not have that for other chronic diseases. We need that. And, and this is one of our biggest barriers, okay, and, and has really stymied us uh, a lot with this project. Um, health policy decision makers need to be engaged to approve and enable population management within the fragmented system. So an interesting um, uh, proof of concept uh, study. Diabetic foot care and limb preservation. Let's just go straight to the challenges down here. There are no dedicated foot care pathways in Ontario for about a third of persons with diabetes at risk for foot ulcers. And um, so the, the issue is that right now you either land up on the emergency room or, 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 or nothing. And there's no effective foot surveillance at most primary care clinics um, and no OHEP billing for that. So we have a real challenge. And the goal here is to develop and evaluate a prototype of a multidisciplinary wound care pathway that links primary care with chiropathy and hospital-based specialist services. And the issue is really how do we how do we connect things at the primary care level? And many primary care practitioners will tell you that they uh, have uh, major issues in uh, seeking that pathway of uh, foot care that then prevents people actually landing up in the hospital. So we have multiple projects examining the key roles of primary care and chiropathy, podiatry, and preventing urgent care admissions, um, identifying regions in Ontario and leaders within primary care, diabetes education, chiropathy, and high-risk foot and wound care centers to co-create value-based pathways for timely referral, and federal funding from the Future Skills Canada to conduct value-based healthcare analysis. This is uh, being done. This uh, project is really fantastic. And this, this one focuses on older adults with diabetes and multiple chronic conditions. This is being done with our colleagues from the uh, RQ, the Aging Community and Health Research Unit at McMaster. And um, um, I think that uh, Maureen and Rebecca are actually uh, probably on this call, but it's really their project. And 
we've been uh, working with them and uh, jointly putting our resources together. But um, what they've done, uh, and this really occurred even before um, our Diabetes Action Canada came into existence in 2016, is they have developed these uh, integrated scare, uh, care models for older adults with diabetes and multiple chronic conditions for effective patient-centered population health management and really studying this and studying the um, effects on, on their well-being and mental health and, and whether they can reduce uh, ER admissions, et cetera. And it involves a whole, um, uh, um, a whole series of um, things like home visits and uh, monthly group sessions, some of it being done in conjunction with YMCA, nurse-led care coordination, monthly uh, nurse-led care conferences, et cetera. Um, and they also, so the Sport Primary and Integrated Healthcare Innovation Grant with multi-jurisdictional steering committee with patient partners, policymakers, clinicians, and academic leads uh, from at least four prov province is underway to enable scaling of the intervention. And this is a large grant. Um, the, there is collaboration with uh, the Women's College Health and uh, Diabetes Action Canada patient partners to create training modules and uh, virtual intervention successfully established during COVID. Obviously, it was very uh, challenging during COVID. 25% um, of Canada's population will be more than 65 years of age with the highest prevalence of diabetes. Um, many of them have, uh, and this group has actually studied this, have uh, up to eight comorbidities. Um, COVID delayed the study, impacted study sites, intervention, et cetera. And we need some better data in collaboration with primary care to supplement the population into high risk for targeted intervention. Um, <coughs> excuse me, we have established a national diabetes repository. Um, what is it? It's a national analytical platform compliant with uh, PHIPAA and ISO standards for primary care EMR data. We have almost 150,000 patients, uh, mostly from Ontario, but also from other provinces, from five provinces. Data from the Ontario Alliance for Healthier Communities, the CHC, um, expected uh, later this year. And there's a patient-oriented governance model. So the governance, governance of this is really uh, led by our patient partners. It's, it's uh, being utilized, it's uh, ready, it's uh, very easy to use, and we welcome projects. Um, the opportunities are for comparative analysis with other provinces and jurisdictions. Um, it can, it, we, we believe that this can be used as an innovation hub, particularly for capacity building in advanced data analytics and, and artificial intelligence. And we have some of the AI researchers already play, and mathematicians plugging away at our database. They like this. This is EMR data, and it's actually uh, very useful to them and uh, possibly even more useful than some of the administrative databases with the really uh, millions, if not billions of data points. Um, there is a very low barrier for use uh, with ownership of uh, research outputs. Primary care data um, for vulnerable populations not connected to FHTs and data includes prescriptions, lab tests, family history and vital stats. And uh, linking with uh, CAHI is being explored and collaboration with the HDRN. Let me also just make one other general comment about data. So the issue is we've got more than 4 million people with diabetes in Canada, but not all 4 million are at risk for the bad outcomes, uh, such as blindness and loss of limb and kidney failure, et cetera. It's really a minority of that group that is at very high risk. Most people with diabetes actually do extremely well. So using data to identify those who are at greatest risk of poor diabetes outcomes is absolutely essential so that we can then direct our resources to that subgroup of the population with uh, diabetes. And many, of course, uh, of course, there are uh, genetic and biological determinants of poor outcomes, but almost certainly the social determinants of health um, far outweigh uh, the importance of that. And, and so uh, having data that where, where we can actually identify those at greatest risk is extremely important. And finally, the, the project I'd like to highlight is for type one diabetes, one of the issues is that clinical trials take very, uh, it, it take way too long. 
and we're entering a very exciting time in type 1 diabetes where we really are optimistic that there'll be immune therapies. We already have some that have some um, positive uh, results, but we think over the next few years, we'll have a number of uh, immune therapies that can really change the outcome of uh, type 1 diabetes. So recruiting people, you know, having a study and then taking five years to get 100 patients is just way too long. So we developed this tool, which is a national patient engagement platform for those living with type 1 diabetes. And the goal is to accelerate T1D research by using matchmaking algorithm to match potential research participants to recruiting studies. We are um, gearing this up and hope to have thousands of people signed on and ready to participate. With this, we have more than 20 registered uh, um, studies now and um, patient partner advisory groups. So the interesting thing about this platform is it was really co-developed with people living with type one diabetes and their caregivers. And it was a very interesting process uh, to watch how um, you know the researchers came up, came in with an idea, the patient partners pushed back, they had a different idea, maybe that went a little bit too far, didn't meet the needs of the researchers. And so a co-development of a tool that's very useful came into being. And the opportunities is that this could be um, become a registry of patient reported data in type 1 diabetes, transferable model for recruitment in a clinical trials using a systematic and digital approach, foundation for developing a provincial and maybe even national T1D registry, patient-oriented use of data and research, and data linkage with administrative data sets is being explored. And so that's it. I will stop sharing, and hopefully we've left some, oh, not enough time. I didn't realize that taking so long. Sorry about that. Okay. Great. Thank you, Gary. So, so Tracy, we, we there's a couple of questions here and a couple of comments. Uh, the first one is actually from, from the uh, OSU management team, uh, which consists of the leads, uh, the centers, and the initiative leads. And they, they'd like to ask you, how do you determine what evidence from a research project is sufficiently ready for, for prime time? Mm. Uh, thanks for the question, uh, Dean, and actually thanks for having me here today. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, so we were actually thinking about this question, and one of the one of the questions from us is like, what does prime time look like for everyone? So we, we know an ultimate goal of all of our research is that the outcomes do eventually get adopted into hospital, or sorry, into practice, into policy, and are mainly used widely because obviously we have a lot of um, interest in seeing our interventions actually have success and have success for more, including those people who are at risk and are in uh, vulnerable populations. But I think also a, another prime time um, outcome and something that we really do focus a lot of our research on is how much does it impact those who do live with diabetes? And we work so closely with people of all of all types of diabetes across the country, both in, in central uh, locations as well as in uh, remote. And really having an intervention or something that has been proven through research that can be used at the community level to really make change uh, is a real important outcome for some of the things that we do. And we've had great successes in some of the other programs. We only had the opportunity here to highlight really four programs of work. We have 11 in total. So, you know, we've had a lot of great success in that space and then taking that information, then scaling it up and having it more available to others and adopted in other jurisdictions is really important for our, for our teams. Great, thank you. And, and another question is what resources and supports are in place to support patient partnered research? Yeah, so we actually have a, a very robust patient engagement program and we work very closely with all of our research teams to make sure that patient partnership starts early and starts, at, starts early and happens at all of the right times. So we have learned a lot about patient partnership uh, with Diabetes Action Canada. We've had a lot of great successes and a lot of lessons learned, and we've even done an internal study about what was the best approach for patient partner integration. Um, so we are, we are finding the right time points to bring people in to get maximum feedback and maximum um, opportunity for engagement to really make impact in the research studies. So we actually have a really great um, recruitment, monitoring, um, and feedback program within our network uh, that just continues to build as we enter into our phase two. Wonderful. So thank you uh, both Tracy and Gary for, for an excellent presentation and, and uh, 
uh, you know, informing us about the all the great work that's happening at Diabetes Action Canada. So thank you. Thanks thank you. Bye -bye. I would now. Oh, great. 